So let me go, if it's okay, let me go back to Frank. Um, Frank, are, are you still with us, sir? There we go. Yes, uh, I am. Okay. And again, I should apologize for some of the chaos, just a little bit of scheduling changes. So yeah, again, what, what, and I know that you already explored this a little bit. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about what your father saw and did during the 1950s. You, you, so Paul LaViolette had mentioned that he was a radar operator during the invasion of Washington. No, I believe no, no, no. He, he's, he was much more than a radar. Operator. Okay. He was he was in charge in 1952 of the um, sightings uh, here in Washington D.C. Um, if it's okay, and I should apologize for interrupting, but yeah, if you could just kind of run me through, if you could run us through the story, and 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 again, I feel guilty for kind of ambushing you with this. I just got really excited because that's I think that's a part of American history that's that's not discussed enough, you know? Yeah, the, the DC sightings are uh, uh, well known in 1952. Yeah, so you mentioned that he was in charge of the sightings and this was, I believe, seven objects over Washington DC on two different weekends. Yes, yeah. Ah. Yeah. And, and so uh, at the, uh, you know, my father uh, uh, had been a physicist and an electrical engineer, and he worked on um, feedback control uh, problems, but uh, he was a radar uh, uh, expert. He, he developed the Mark 50 uh, gun director uh, that uh, turned the tide in the Pacific, uh, where the first uh, uh, shooting down of planes uh, automatically, uh, you know, not by people, but looking through a peephole. Uh, and uh, so, at any rate, the, the important thing is that in, in 1952 was his introduction to another reality that he. Uh, had previous to 1952 not believed to be possible. Um, and, and he, it was, it was very disturbing to him. Uh, he, uh, he, uh, I, I remember as a 12 year old, uh, him walking around the basement, uh, talking to himself, uh, saying things like they can be seen and not seen simultaneously on radar. They can't do the turns that they've done. Uh, in other words, he was, he was uh, in charge of all the data uh, that was being acquired. And, and so he, he knew what had happened in an incontrovertible manner. Um, so, uh, and then uh, I was, I was as a 12 year old kid, I was really worried about him uh, because it seemed to be getting worse and worse. And then one day everything was fine. And he had a new job uh, at the Naval Research Laboratory here in, in Washington with uh, J. Archibald Wheeler as his boss. And he had a lot of young Princeton type mathematicians working for him. And one of them was Dr. Richard Arnerwood. And so uh, I, I as, a, as a child, I, uh, I grew up with uh, uh, people like uh, Dick Arnerwood and my father working on interstellar travel out of my kitchen. The, and so as a kid, I was always uh, interested in um, showing what I knew. And uh, uh, I, I did well and better than anybody had ever done before in my high school in mathematics and so on. 
and and I uh, in 1956 I uh, had a new McGraw Hill physics book, and the uh, and I read uh, Einstein's theory of relativity twice, and I came home one afternoon, and I I announced to my father and this Dick Arnowit that I understood Einstein's theory of relativity and I only needed five minutes to explain it to them. They said, oh, that's okay. We, we you know, uh, no, then I insisted. So my father said, okay, but only five minutes. I started in and I, I got, uh, three or four minutes in and my father interrupted me and he said, Dick, you know Einstein, don't you? And uh, this fellow that I only knew as Dick, who was Dr. Richard Arnowit, he said, yes, uh, I see him every time I go back to Princeton and uh, he goes for a long walk with uh, this other physicist sometimes two or three hours and they're always talking about these things and at which point my father said Halbardi and uh and Dick uh nodded his head and said yes and then at that point my father said and he and what he Halbardi says works this is 1956. In other words, what Einstein is saying doesn't work in 1956. And so that'll give you some, uh, some uh, idea of uh, the difference between 1952 and 1956. But by 1970, and this is, this is what, I'm 81 years old now. Uh, by 1970, my father said to me, face to face, just the two of us alone, down and walking on the beach at Cape Canaveral, he said to me, we have been doing interstellar travel for some time now. Now, as, as a 30 year old, uh, fellow, it was difficult for me to accept that, even though it was coming from my own father and he hadn't lied to me before. Uh, and, and so I questioned him for about a half hour about it. And, and uh, the, the, his answers uh, have uh, borne out in, in uh, uh, the, the last uh, 40 years that I've been looking into uh, interstellar travel. And of course, the, 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 the means of, how do you do it? And, uh, and, uh, and again, that's where you get back to this 50% of how you do anything is knowing for sure that it has been done. And see, this is, this is what this uh, J. Archibald Wheeler group knew. They were, the, they were the, uh, the coalescing of all information that the government, the, all, any governments had uh, about what had been done. And then, uh, uh, so, so it's, it's very interesting. I've, I've had a, a relationship with uh, Paul LaViolette and uh, I've, uh, I'm, I'm boring uh, people like uh, Tim Vallone to death uh, with uh, constant emails and stuff like that. But uh, it, it's, it's um, every, uh, I'd say my last 40 years has been confirming that what my father told me in 1970 was in fact true.
Well, Frank, if, Frank, if, if I could ask real quick, I, I, I'm sure you've probably seen all of these stories about UAPs in the news, right? Which they've relabeled, you know, UFOs are now UAPs. This sounds like exactly the same thing that your father was involved with. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and well, I should say thank, thank you to Tom. Tom just did a screen share so that we can see. You may be able to see it. Um, he's actually showing the, uh, the, the legacy 1952, which. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. And, and, and you know, Tom, while you're there, uh, Paul, uh, just uh, a year or so ago, Paul LaViolette sent me a newspaper article, a picture of a newspaper article that uh, was uh, that I couldn't, I, I never found, but somehow Paul found it because we know he's working on interstellar travel. Um, the, that, uh, that said, the headline of it was that in 1955, Dr. Richard Arnowit discovers the anti-gravity particle. Now, now we know, we know that, well, people like Wheeler say that his life is, is the journey from particle physics through field physics into quantum physics, which he describes as informational. In other words, he doesn't know, he doesn't have People uh, that I know in in quantum physics, I know a few physicists uh, uh, that uh, work for DARPA and so on, and, and uh, they uh, they they are not so much interested in theories of how things work, but they're in, interested in information that and information that can be either falsified or validated. And, and I think that's where we are now. We're, we're in the, we're, we're in, we're getting more and more information about how, what the universe is. And uh, uh, it's, uh, it's not a, a big bang. <laughs> Let, let's, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Well, yeah, and, and again, I, I thank you for joining us and, and sharing these stories because the, you know, what what's what's interesting is these sightings over over Washington D.C. in 1952 seem very very similar to what what was cited in 2004, I think, with the USS Nimitz, and then 2015, and so they were, I believe, saucer shapes, glowing disks, you know, and the moving yep. moving at, at speeds and being able to change speeds without so some of the things that you mentioned yep. earlier they, so. the, the saucers the 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 vehicles uh appear at their uh, will they, they can be unseen if they wish and and the, and they're able to accelerate rapidly and and pull turns and pull moves at g-forces that would probably kill a pilot i think that was one of the other things that yes. you mentioned oh, oh most, most certainly that, that those are the initial problems the, the 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 real problems are how what what how do you go from galaxy to galaxy yeah yeah, no, that's it's interesting uh, well and and the, the reason that it intrigued me was it it Again, you'd mentioned kind of a wave of these sightings. I think that's what the history books have too for 52 was there was a wave of these sightings that happened for, right. for a couple of weeks or so, and then it just went away. And it seems like that's what happened recently again also, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, it, 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 it does seem like uh, they disclosed themselves, but we have the whole issue of technology itself. I mean, where do we get fiber optics from? Uh, wh where, uh, you know, where, how did uh, Tesla do what he did? Uh, uh, how did my father and his group do what they did? You see, they, they didn't, you know, how did, 
how does uh, Putin have um, missiles that are uh, 31 times the speed of sound? Uh, did, did, he, uh, did he make some breakthroughs or did he uh, somehow hire some smart guys? No, these things are dropped in our laps. Hmm. Yeah, oh, it looks like Tom is, ah, okay, the Corso book, yeah. But, but, but of course, that's just where my father started in 1952. When the, uh, by, by 1970, he was telling me we are do, have been doing interstellar travel for some time now. And the we was the, 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 the top group on, the, on this planet. Yeah, you, you'd mentioned that earlier. You'd mentioned that earlier, so. And, and, and it, it, the we is the uh, ones that uh, have been in, uh, deciding, uh, you know, who gets uh, a forever battery and who doesn't. Would that be uh, considered like the secret space program, like an elite group of humans that separated out their own culture? Yes, yes. I, 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 believe, I believe that there are... Uh, there are humans uh, on on other planets. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, and 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 that kind of goes beyond the scope. Uh, of I, I, I like. I really like that. Jason Rice. Uh, has everybody anybody ever heard of Jason Rice? Uh, he's oh yes, he's in, on Gaia. I've, I've watched yeah. pretty much all of his episodes. Yeah, yeah. I, I, everything he says. I mean, he's he's one of the people that was on my father's <laughs> chips <laughs> you know and and everything he says about time and all that it, it all see my the history of my life uh, now by being a 81 is that everything fits together as a whole cloth for me mm. Frank, what do you uh, think of the 20 and backers, people who claim that they worked for 20 years for the secret space? Yes, program? of course. Yes. And, and isn't it interesting that they, uh, they don't uh, uh, age? And uh, uh, isn't it interesting that they, the, the technology that they use, the helmets, the neural helmets, uh, uh, where they have to be careful about what they think about their commander, because their commander can see what they're thinking about him. Well, we could do that ourselves naturally. It's called telepathy, but I guess they found right. a way to uh, connect with it on a more well, logical the, the, level. The whole thing now is, is the control, you know, in other words, uh, uh, the, you know, what's in the vaccine. <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's all, it's all about control, and uh, uh, it's—I uh, believe—it's all about the. Uh, for instance, I'm—I'm I'm very much at odds with people like Stephen Greer. You all know him, about him, and so on. Uh, and and I am, because in in conversations with him, uh, he tells me, "Well, Frank, all your." Uh, musings about uh, uh, good ETs and bad ETs and interdimensional ETs and non-interdimensional ETs and all that. He says, As these ETs are so advanced, Frank, that you're, you're judging them is like an ant who has been stepped on saying the ones that step on me are bad and the ones that don't step on me are good. I, That's ridiculous. Uh, the only difference between us and them is that they have anti-gravity technology and we don't. And many of the craft flying over our head possibly don't even have higher IQs than us here at APEC. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. There, there we go. There we go. I didn't yeah. Know if that's an insult. Or <laughs> well, my, so my my only my, and my only worry about the secret space force is it takes us off our topic a little bit, right? And so that's 
That's why I like I worry about going too far out on a limb because it takes us too far away from well, our scope. Well, well, but the, but, the, but the thing, the one point there is we have free will. See, and and they have free will. So and, my cat. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And you wish they so didn't. I, I, before, it, before it gets lost, okay. First, I I, I, I told, uh, I asked Glenn about, uh, or Tony about um, if I gave him my data, if if uh, he could look up, but now I don't see him. I, it doesn't seem like he's there. Oh, uh, um, you know, I can I can help you with that. There, Michael, there he is, okay. Oh. Before, before uh, you go too far though, I just wanted to show, I went and I found, so the, the data set for him, and I posted it on the chat session. You can see there. There's oh, um, two documents there I put in the figures and the description. Oh, yeah, actually, I'll, I'll download it. I just it. wanted to point out to Tony that there's a table in it, okay, in the, in the description, and it has uh, all the results summarized. And then the figure shows all the images of the data. So you can actually uh, see the, the the raw data, and you can see the table of results. So, yeah, I got it. Oh, and, okay, okay. And if you if you have any questions, um, I'll, I'll send you an email, and then you can you can uh, you can uh, just ask me your questions. Like if there's some dimension you don't know that you're missing, just just email me, and I'll tell you what it is. Okay. 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 Well, so l let me do this then. Um, Frank, if, I mean, if it's okay, maybe if it's okay to, you know, trouble you for maybe another 10 minutes or so, and then we could go sure. to, uh, yeah. And, I, and I recommend to everybody this ADM quantum physics theory. Okay. It's, it's, uh, it's the way things are. <laughs> A ADM. Yeah. ADM. And you know what, let me, let me look that up. Uh, physics. Well, and I, I want to thank you again for joining us today. That to the, is a little bit. Oh, ADM formalism. Ah, okay. Yeah, there we go. See, the A in ADM is Arnowit. Yeah. Who I knew when I was 12 to, to 18 as Dick. I, I didn't even know his last name. Yeah, well, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it is so interesting. It's almost like history is repeating itself. You know, I mean, this, this 1952 event, and I looked that up briefly. I've read about it before, but I looked it up briefly. And, um, you know, it's the same, the same performance characteristics, the same sighting characteristics, all of these things about the UAPs from the 50s. And, and the, the most interesting thing about it is the planes that went up never came back. They were dustified by directed energy. Oh, I hadn't heard that. I hadn't heard that. So the, the planes they sent up to, to, to basically investigate this just disappeared then. Right. Mm. It, 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 it's, it's like the, uh, uh, you know all these things. I mean, they're they they're real. Uh, you know, like the the uh, uh, Brooklyn uh, the the in in 1942, Tesla death ray could uh, dustify um, uh, 200 planes uh, or a uh, thousand planes at at 200 miles distance. The, the Tesla death ray was the big, big weapon of World War II. They, they just used the atomic bomb. Uh, you know, Wheeler was in charge of the atomic bomb. See, my father's boss was in charge of the atomic bomb. So they just, used, they decided to use the atomic bomb in order to keep directed energy secret to use it in 9-11, to use it in uh, California, you know, mm. to use and, and to use, 
to use Fukushima uh, to, to create earthquakes. The people, the person that you really should uh, check out is Adam Tromley. He's, he's the one, I talk to him all the time. We, you know, we have a good time together, but Adam knows, Adam knows how things work. Adam knows that the planet is a homopolar mechanism. Ah, uh, okay. He, uh, he, he knows that, he knows, and like we know that when you put a cover on something, it keeps it warm. So the idea of putting a, a cover around the planet in order to stop it from heating up is ridiculous because it's like a blanket that's keep, that will create greater warmth. Uh, they, they've been coming to Adam for 40 years. Uh, and and uh, he, I know him because his father knew my father. And we know all these people. It, you, it's hard to name somebody, Bedini, Townsend, all the people that I've heard here, uh, we both knew uh, of and or knew or talked to in, in our life. Adam is about my age. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Well, well, thank you. Thank you again for, thank you again for sharing that. I, I sincerely appreciate it. it, it so, so Adam Tromley and ADM. Yeah, and we've already actually we've already got some links, and so I will look those up. And uh, yeah, Ed Becknell posted about Adam Trombley in there, and let me let me take a look real quick. Um, and the ADM I'll have to read about. I think they list that as ADM formalism, but but then it has Arnowit in there. So yeah, well yeah. he's 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 it, and it's very interesting his relationship to people like Feidman. You see, we know about Feidman, but Feidman was not quite in the inner circle. And so there were things that Arnowit was not allowed to say to Feidman. Ah, okay. And, and so, so he, you know, he's a, uh, he, he's a, a, a person that uh, uh, was a very, one of the best friends of Arnowit, uh, but uh, you know how that works. Uh, doesn't mean, there's things that you can't tell your wife and your best friends, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and absolutely. There, well, Frank, and, thank, thank and, you. And we, we, the, the main thing is, we, you know, the main thing is these people have unilaterally decided to suppress the technology that should have been humanities. Uh, you know, uh, why ha we should we should have never used gas. We, nev we never should have used oil. Uh, we we shouldn't have built the interstate highway system. We should have used anti gravity. So uh, uh, you know, but uh, everything is managed. Uh, what we do. Yeah, yeah. Well, sir, thank you, thank you very much. Let me let me do this, Frank. I I, I want to go to our next presenter now, and so sure thing, sure thing. Thank yeah, you. thank you, sir. Thank you so much for for listening to me. Oh, absolutely. Thank you for joining us and sharing that. Thank you for sharing all of that. It, it helps to know. It helps to know about the history behind these things. So. Okay, well, so Frank, let me put you on mute. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to gallery view. Everyone, please give applause for Frank for joining us.